welcome to Christian Financial Perspectives, where you're invited to gain insight, wisdom, and knowledge about how Christians integrate their faith, life, and finances with a biblical worldview. Here's your Christian Financial Advisors host, Bob Barber, and his co-host, Sean Peters. Welcome to another episode of Christian Financial Perspectives. We're so glad that you joined us today or tonight, whatever time it happens to be when you're watching this. And if you like topics covering finance, but from a Christian perspective, then we'd love for you to hit that subscribe button as still we got about 80% of those watching the videos aren't subscribed, which means you're missing out on all the awesome updates that we're putting out. So, and uh, if you like this particular video, be sure to hit that like button as well. Today, we're going to be covering seven biblical financial guidelines, and we hope this will be helpful to you. Bob, you want to give us a little intro on this? You know, what is funny, what you were saying, you can watch this any time of day or the night. You know, I did radio for, for eight years in Texas on San Antonio, uh, Austin, Houston, and Corpus Christi, and you had to be there right at that time if you wanted to hear the program. Mm -hmm. It's before any of this ever came out. So, boy, I love this technology where you can, you can any time of the day, you can watch this. So, yeah, Sean, today we're going to be talking about seven uh, biblical financial guidelines and um there's just seven, and so many of these, this is a lot of common sense, but a lot of wisdom, and this is taken from God's Word. So I'm excited to be bringing this to Christian Financial uh, Perspectives. The first one is really a novel idea, especially here in America. So and you, you, you ready? Yeah, let's okay, do it. Okay, let's, let's do it. Spend less than you earn. Who would have thunk it? So don't spend more than you made in income. That's exactly right. It's, now, that's not like our government. You can't just raise the debt ceiling, but yes. Spend less than you earn. What's the scripture? Proverbs 21, 20. In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. It's kind of pretty tough there, isn't it? A yeah. foolish man devours all he has. Well, you know, Bob, our channel, I think, is a little different than okay. some of the, quote, financial gurus uh -huh. out there because... Most of the time, you have people who are cherry picking certain stocks that they, that they did really well on. They don't talk about you know the other ninety percent that they did terrible on, or they're talking about how if you follow their advice, how how wealthy you're going to be and how how many thousands of dollars per day you're making. But it's always interesting because most of those people make money specifically on selling their courses and and the idea that they actually are are doing really well, but what we're talking about here with biblical financial guidelines, honestly, is probably a little less flashy, a little less boring, because these are based on Scripture. It's based on truth. It's not based on hype. just hype. There's no hype you here. Know? Yeah. Spend so, less than you earn. Who, so just kind of okay, giving you a one. little bit of a, a setup here that, you know, again, these are not going to be something that makes you rich in one day. No. Nope. You know, these, That's but right. these are things that they're biblical financial guidelines, and if you follow them, they might not be flashy, but it will definitely make a positive impact they on your life. They will work over time. That's They've right. been tried and proven That's right. over thousands of years. The second one is control the use of debt. What? <laughs> yes, control the <laughs> yeah. use of debt. And you know why? The Bible is very clear on this. It, it tells us in Proverbs 22, 7, that the rich rule over the poor, that's like the banks, okay, and the borrower is slave to the lender. And when we say mm. the control the use of debt, I, I know it's very hard like to buy a home yeah. debt free, yeah. but, but I'm hoping that's the only debt that you have, no other debt at all. Um, as you get older, there's no reason to borrow money for a car. You know, maybe the cars are so expensive nowadays, but just buy a cheaper car yeah. until you can or afford Or save up more. a little bit longer and, and keep driving the one that you have. That's right. But, you know, this kind of goes back to number one, spend less than you earn. There's a difference between buying a home, especially when you're younger, you mm -hmm. know, and, and you don't have a lot of assets saved up. There's a difference between using that debt to buy a home and using debt like a credit card to finance going out to eat too often. Right. You know, just to buying stuff that you don't actually need to live. So be careful with that. You know, um, Rachel laughs at me because she goes, Bobby, you don't like to spend money on anything unless you know it's an investment and you're going to get some money back. <laughs> and I'm kind of like that. 
I, that that's in my I, in I my think, nature. I think that's a good trait when you're a financial advisor. Yeah, I do too. To, so to you, you your, talk about the default. the <laughs> use of debt in a mortgage instant. You know, you you get the tax deduction on the interest, and appreciating asset over time. Real estate's proven to be that. Well, not only that, Bob, but especially if it's for your primary residence, you're going to pay rent or you're going to pay a mortgage. There isn't really any uh, other option. My, like, my dad, <laughs> you know, my dad was a funny guy, and he said whether you. Uh, whether you rent or whether you buy, you pay for the place you occupy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the third one. Save consistently and build reserves. Yes, sir. Now, this scripture is Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. When you were a little kid, did you ever like to watch the ants? Oh, yeah. You know, they, they, they go back and forth and they're always working. And I, and I think it's interesting that it says, go to the ant, you sluggard. <laughs> I mean, my goodness. Okay, the, the, okay Proverbs, settle yeah, down there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you, you got it. The fourth one is give the worthy causes. Because you know what it does when you give the worthy causes? It breaks the chain of selfishness. And it is truly more blessed to give uh, than receive. And Second Corinthians 9.7 says, each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Okay? That's right. So smile when you're giving. Yeah, and, and I, I love that, breaking the chain of selfishness, because when you give, and you give not reluctantly or under compulsion, but you, but you give joyfully. Yeah, and with it's, a purpose. Yeah, it's it, it makes such an impact on... The rest of your life, it, not just the financial part, but it just kind of gives you this this peace that, okay, God, I'm trusting you. Like right. you're you're asking me to give, you're asking me to to help others. I'm giving out of what I've received, mm -hmm. and it's like you like we say. I mean, it's hard to be selfish when you're focused on, okay, God, what do you want me to give to? Yeah, exactly. You're not holding on to that money so tight, and. Just making that fist. <laughs> well, you know, when you hold on money tight like that, that, that causes tension, right? Uh -huh. So yeah. let, loose. let exactly. loose. And God owns it all. Psalms 24 1 says, The earth is, a is the Lord's and everything in it. Number five, invest wisely and diversify. A scriptural principle behind this was from Solomon, who's, who said, Invest in seven ventures, yes, in, in eight. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. So, you that was know. Ecclesiastes 11 2. Did I say a different one? I don't think you said the scripture. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. No, Ecclesiastes 11 too, exactly. <laughs> um, and I did, yeah, I just said Solomon because I yeah, know he, yeah. he wrote Ecclesiastes. But Solomon did not go put all of his money in just stocks. If they were here today, he wouldn't put them all in stocks, would he? Right. Or all in bonds or all in real estate. Boy, that's a big one. You know, a lot of people put all their money in real estate. They think that's the way to go. All your money in gold. No, it's, he, he diversified his funds amongst many different types of investments. And just think of that, of all the different ways that we can invest today. You know, we, we go back a few podcasts where we talked about all the sectors mm -hmm. that, that, and there's, there's like 11 to 12 different sectors to invest in. So you could still invest in stocks, but be very diversified yeah. actually in even, 11 even to 12 sectors. Yep. That's correct. That's right. So number six, manage risk. This is for Health, disability, life, auto, home, and liability insurance. Yep. You know, and, and that really, that's what you got to remember on, on the insurance is that it's about managing your risk. Mm -hmm. That's really all it's for. It's another, another term that I've heard for property and casualty insurance, life insurance, all these different types of insurance is risk management. Yeah. Okay. I think the and, easiest one, Bob, for people to think about is your life insurance. You know, people think of, oh, life insurance, if something happens to me, my family gets a lot of money because mm -hmm. it's payout. Yeah. But the reason why life insurance is is so important to have, especially when you're younger, if you get term life insurance when you're young, it's not expensive. It's dirt, but the dirt risks, cheap. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But the risk that you're managing is that if something should happen to you when you're younger and you haven't been able to build up any retirement assets, it helps take care of your of your family. Yeah. But because it's term and it's going to expire after a while, you need to make sure that the other part of this equation is saving and investing wisely 
So over time, as the insurance is expiring, mm -hmm. you actually have your own hard assets. But that's managing that at risk. my age, I'm going to be 61 in June. Life insurance is expensive. Ooh, I wouldn't even want to know how much your premiums <laughs> would be. It's a lot. <laughs> but you know what? Another thing that you need to be uh, very uh, aware of is managing risk with auto insurance. And, you know, mm -hmm. you, you've heard it. Pay for what you need. You know, well, wait a second. What do you need? You need enough to cover you. And to buy auto insurance or home insurance just based on price is foolish. Yep. Okay. It's very foolish. Yep. You need to base it based on coverage because when that time happens, you're going to not, you're going to wish that you bought adequate coverage. Yeah. And I've seen coverage. So if you're just trying to get the coverage to get by, it is not going to cover you. And you've got all these guys out here in our area. We got the what we call the four 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 guy. He's the <laughs> yeah. He's the an attorney, the local attorney that advertises here. And you know they're just out suing people left and right. That's how they're making their money. Yeah. And you don't have a lot of insurance to cover you. They're going to go after your other assets. Exactly. Okay? Insurance is there to help you, <clears throat> especially liability insurance. I like liability like an umbrella policy. Right. Covering right. you. Okay. This brings and us to the last one. Let's me. not forget our scripture though. Okay. We do, we right. do need to read the scripture for me. Yeah, absolutely. Risk. This goes with risk. Yeah. Proverbs 4, 6. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Yep. That's saying there. It's, I, th I picked that because I thought, well, that is wisdom to manage risk. Right. That's right. And number seven, know your financial condition. Proverbs 27, 23 through 24. Be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Give careful attention to your herds, for riches do not endure forever, and a crown is not secure for all generations. That is basically saying write down all of your assets, write down all of your liabilities. We call it a balance sheet around here. And, and you know, we've gone through the financial plan, and I'd invite you to go back and watch the one that we did, the uh, interactive, integrative financial mm -hmm. plan, I, I can pull up my financial condition 24-7 with just, just the you know, click, and there it is, mm -hmm. because it's updating every single day, and I know what my financial condition is. Yeah. Sean, you'd be surprised how many people do not know their financial condition. They don't, they don't understand their assets and their liabilities and their net worth. Yeah. And if, you're, if your net worth, if you're liabilities are higher than your net worth, this is where you need some help, mm -hmm. most definitely. And as, so as we come to the end today of the this, this seven guidelines for biblical financial principles, we want to help make sure that you put these in order and that you use these uh, biblical financial guidelines. Sean, I've never seen anybody hurt by using these guidelines. Nope. You're going to be prosperous when you do. I'm not speaking prosperity theology, okay? But you will be prosperous when you follow these biblical guidelines. Yeah. You'll be successful financially. It, it, it always it always makes me think of the the parable of the talents. That, yes. You know, each each was each servant was given a different amount, but each could have been prosperous with what they had. It did not mean they'd have the same dollar amount yeah. at the end, but they could have been maybe instead of prosperous, I think a better way would be successful. Yeah. You know, yeah. be successful with what you've been given. Absolutely. Whatever that ends up being. <laughs> we could have called this seven biblical uh, financial guidelines for being successful. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And we want to help you be successful. And in the way that you can get a hold of us, we are Christian Financial Advisors. And our phone number during uh, regular business hours, Central Standard Time, you can phone or text that at 830-609-6986. Or you can go to our website, to ChristianFinancialAdvisors.com. Any last word, Sean? Uh God bless you all. Thank you again for, for joining us. It, it, it is always weird. Is it evening? Do I say good night? Thanks. You know, good morning. I know. Thanks I know. For... I'm not sure what. <laughs> well, let's just Whatever go. time you're day, day, I hope you have a great day, a great night, a great evening, there whatever time of the day you're yeah, listening. Let's to cover this. all our bases. You got and, it. But yeah, thank you for joining us. And until next time, God bless. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to like and comment and subscribe to our channel so you can get future updates. You can also follow us on social media, channel shown on screen. In the meantime, check out one of these other videos.